Welcome to Take 5. Um, I'm Sam Mulberry. About 2,000 years ago, the Romans killed the leader of a very popular Jewish movement. Um, this leader was hailed by many as being the long-awaited Messiah, and his following was enormous, and yet I'm guessing you've never heard of him. His name was Ben Kossiba, and he was killed in the year 135 AD. And for most of history, we'd never heard of him, and certainly there's no people today identifying as followers of Ben Kossiba. There's no religious movement called Ben Kossibianity. But a hundred years earlier, the Romans had executed the leader of another Jewish movement. Um, this one you have heard of. He was only active in public ministry for, for three years. At the time of his death, he had only a handful of followers. And yet, Jesus Christ is arguably the most famous person in history. And the question is, why do we know him, but not Ben Kossiba? There were dozens of messianic movements at that time. Why is Jesus Christ the one who even today we've not only just heard of, but actually still commands a vast following? Well, the answer to that question lies in one word, resurrection. The followers of Jesus at the time believed that he had come back from the dead. Those who followed him ever since have the same conviction. And it's something Jesus Christ claimed for himself. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, Jesus is saying a number of things in that claim. He is saying that there is such a thing as life beyond death. He's saying that God himself is not at peace with death in this world. And he's saying that that life beyond death is to be found in him. He doesn't say he has access to that resurrection life. He says he is that resurrection life. Now, we don't like to think about death um, for a number of reasons. It, it feels so uncertain. Uh, Shakespeare famously described death as the undiscovered country. It's a place we've got to go to, but we know virtually nothing about and perhaps even whether it even exists. And so a lot of people will say, well, we can't know about it and therefore it's just better not to think about it. Or we're uncomfortable with the fact that death is so final. Uh, one journalist wrote that he was terrified of death. He said, 200 years after I've died, no one will even know who I was. And then he said, who of us even knows our great grandparents' names? But the fact is we can't avoid death. Um, there's a moment in the C.S. Lewis novel, That Hideous Strength, where the main character is suddenly confronted by the imminent reality of his own likely death. And there's a scene where he suddenly looks at his hand, his right hand, and it occurs to him that one day this will be the hand of a corpse. And after that it will become the hand of a skeleton. It's a very arresting thought. If you look at your own hands now and think one day these hands will be lifeless. There's a lot we can do to try to delay that, but there's nothing we can do to avoid that. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how healthy you are. It doesn't matter how religious you are. All of us will have to face death. And so when someone claims to be the resurrection and the life, we need to pay attention. When that some, same person reportedly brings people back from, from the death, we see accounts of that in the Gospels. Again, we need to look at that. And when that same person himself is raised, not just from death back to the life that he'd had before, but raised from death into new life, into resurrection life, then nothing could be more urgent than examining his claims. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. 